It's time for a brand new ranking of the Halloween franchise, including Halloween 2018. Super pumped. Let's do this. What's up guys? Super excited. Time to rank the Halloween franchise again. I did this a couple years ago, but uh, now with the new movie and my ranking might have changed slightly since. Um, excited about doing this again. So before I get into this, make sure you get down in the comments, post your rankings below. And also if you're thinking about giving a, uh, a hate comment, go right ahead. I love hate comments. It's really fun. I got plenty of them on my last ranking. Why not? By the way guys, these are just opinions. If you love Halloween Resurrection, I love you for loving Halloween Resurrection. I don't judge you at all, okay? Anyway, let's get down to the ranking. Number 11 is Halloween Resurrection. Wow, I do not like this movie. There are moments in it that are okay, but uh, the biggest crime that Halloween Resurrection did was uh, make Michael Myers a joke through uh, Freddy, played by Buster Rhymes. Uh, Freddy is one of my least favorite characters in horror history. What he did to Michael Myers is inexcusable. Uh, and this was the last OG Myers movie I saw in the theater before seeing this new movie. So finally the taste was washed out of my mouth. You do have some fun characters here and there, some good kills. Brad Lloyd's not a bad Michael, but uh, overall it's a pretty forgettable slasher. Number 10 is Rob Zombie's Halloween. There are parts of Rob Zombie's Halloween that I actually like. Uh, Tyler Mayne is a great Myers. Uh, the last half of the movie is watchable. It's lit very well. Rob Zombie has um, a great way of, you know, telling a story through a camera, but he just can't write a script for shit. And the first half of this movie is living proof of that. Uh, the characters are detestable, even the ones that aren't supposed to be detestable, and it just it ruins the movie. You know, I didn't like young Michael Myers and, the, you know, they tried to tell a little bit too much of his backstory, or maybe they just told the wrong story. I don't know. I just didn't like how Myers was presented as a child in this movie. I like him to be more of a blank slate. Now, from this point on, I really enjoy all these movies, but number nine is going to be Halloween 5. Um, Halloween 5 does commit a lot of crimes. You know, there are some really stupid moments in the movie. The cops in the movie are laughable but not in a good way. And then you have this music to just accent that. Tina is not a really great character, especially jumping off of such a great character, uh, Rachel, in Halloween 4. You know, Halloween 5, it's really just all over the place. You know, that last act really saves it, you know. Because Don Shanks is a good Myers, I think. I don't mind the mask that much, but, uh, you know, I like what Dominique uh, Othin and Gerard brought as far as, like, expressionism in the movie it does have a european expressionism type feel to it it's even got a, like a gothic type feel to it but overall it's just a forgettable movie you know there's some good moments in there i don't like that they made uh, jamie lloyd a mute uh, throughout most of the movie because jamie lloyd's a great character so do something else with her but yeah halloween 5 not really a good movie number eight let's get controversial halloween h2o I have major, major problems with H2O. Jamie Lee Curtis saves this movie. That last act is pretty damn good. But the big thing, I'll cut right to the chase, that I really don't like about H2O is Myers. Uh, and, and, you know, I'll defend Chris Duran a little bit because uh, he had to change masks four times. Uh, maybe he wasn't given enough direction, but I didn't like the way he uh, presented the character, really. His shoulders weren't that broad. He had just kind of a weird stance to him. It was pigeon-toed. Uh, and, you know, the mask debacle is a major crime in this movie. You bounce from, like, mask to mask to mask to mask. It's, it's annoying. Also, you know, a lot of people say that this movie feels like Scream. It does feel like Scream. It, it came out a couple years after Scream. They wanted to capitalize on the success of Scream. So let's, let's even include some actual Scream music in this movie, which is what they did. Score is a big problem for me because it's just too ambitious. It sounds like an orchestra. I don't think an orchestral sound should be in a Halloween movie. But like I said, Jamie Lee Curtis does save this movie. She is the shining light in H2O. Okay, number seven. Pretty much from here on out, guys, we got some really fantastic movies. That's why the Halloween franchise is my favorite franchise. I love a lot of these movies, uh, including number seven, which is Halloween 2. Halloween 2 is a great movie, actually. It takes place the second the first movie ends. Uh, Rick Th Rosenthal does a really good job in the director's chair, I think, in this movie. you got some interesting characters. The whole thing takes place in a hospital, which is a lot of fun. 
I think my, my biggest problem with this one is Lori Strode as a character because she doesn't really do that much at all. But it does have one of the best third acts out of the whole franchise. The score by Alan Howarth and John Carpenter is it might even up the score from the first movie. Even though, you know, it really is the score from the first movie, but it just sounds better, I think. It does drag in quite a few places uh, in the middle. It's not as streamlined as the first movie is, but it's still a decent movie. Number six, here's a surprise, Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. I actually love Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. I think the big crime in Rob Zombie's Halloween 1 was it felt like a hodgepodge. But in Halloween 2, it feels like a singular vision, you know? And I've said this before, you will either love or hate Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. You know, uh, if you hate it at the beginning, you're gonna hate it at the end. If you love it at the beginning, you're gonna love it at the end. But uh, I just love the risks that Rob Zombie took with this movie. You know, I love that it's shot in 16 millimeter. It feels so different, but to me in a good way than the rest of the series, it is actually starting to gain a cult following. Uh, I see like, especially in like the Halloween forums, there are people that love Halloween 2, it's, including me. But I loved like, you got some interesting characters in this, like Jeff Daniel Phillips, you know, he's got some really funny lines. Can't afford the new tits, can you can you loan me some bones? That's great. Um, but uh, Brad Dorif is like so good in this, especially at the end when he finds his daughter, Annie, dead. Uh, that scene is probably one of the most emotional scenes in the whole franchise, actually. His performance in that scene is just beautiful. But I'd highly recommend watching the theatrical cut if you're gonna watch Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Um, but I do like uh, how they focus on Laurie Strode as a character and what the aftermath is to what she went through in the first movie. So I didn't like Scarlett Taylor Compton in the first movie. Really liked her in this one, actually. Okay, number five. All these are greats. Halloween 3 Seasons of the Witch. I watch this movie every freaking year. I think it's a genius story about an old guy who wants to kill every kid on the planet. That's irresistible. How could you not love that? You got the great Tom Atkins in this. You got Stacey Nelkin, who I love in this movie. Very easy on the eyes. Uh, the score. One of the most underrated scores out of all the Halloween movies. I, what Alan Howarth and John Carpenter did with this score, it's one of those scores that I like going back and listening to, like, you know, when I'm just doing stuff around the house. It's just a really fun score to listen to. And then you got the, the Silver Shamrock song, which you can't get out of your head. You got the three iconic masks from the movie, which make a cameo in the new movie, actually. But yeah, Halloween 3, it's another one of those movies everybody hated when it first came out, and now a lot of people love it. Most people love it, I think, you know, that, that have given it another chance and went back and watched it. I watch it every year. Number four, Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. Uh, I have always foot stomped my love for this movie, especially the theatrical cut. Producer's cut, I got some major problems with it. Uh, that last act, uh, especially. Uh, I actually like the character moments in the producer's cut, but uh, that last act to me, how they're trying to control Michael, and then you got the whole Michael raping Jamie. Don't like that stuff at all. But uh, the theatrical cut, it, it removes all that stuff and it makes it a much more enjoyable movie. I think Paul Rudd was fantastic in this. Um, I have my own cut of the movie that combines both versions that makes it the best that it can be. But uh, you know, you got John and Deborah Strode, John, uh, Bradford English who played John Strode. What an irresistible character. Just a complete dick bag, but in like the best way. And this is the last time we see Loomis, and I liked Loomis in this, especially uh, the, the added scenes that are in the producer's cut. Uh, he's definitely older, he's tireder, but he would be. But uh, he still, you can tell he still loved the role, and you know, this was kind of like his swan song. But yeah, I love Halloween 6. I watch it constantly. You know, it's probably one of the most controversial movies, too, out of the franchise. You know, it really has like a cult following now. There's a lot of people that are obsessed with this movie. It's just so unique. It's the most brutal version of Myers out of the whole franchise. Uh, you know, there's to me, it's like one of the most perfectly paced. And I didn't even mention the atmosphere yet. The atmosphere in this movie is so good, actually. Probably one of the best out of the whole franchise. It makes you want to go trick-or-treating. Number three, Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. I freaking love this movie to death. This is the movie that got me into the franchise, that made me obsessed with the franchise. And I can't say enough great things. Rachel and Jamie are like the best on-screen duo in like slasher history. Um, I wish Rachel would have lived in part five because I loved that character so much. Uh, George P. Wilbur, what he brought to Myers in this movie. Uh, whatever you think about the mask, George P. Wilbur was great as Myers. This is like the scariest version of the character I had ever seen 
um, up until the new movie, I guess. I mean, George P. Wilbur really, you know, made his money that day. He earned his money that day. And uh, yeah, Halloween 4 is just that, that opening, the atmosphere in the opening is like so iconic. I could go on and on and on about Halloween 4. It's, there's so many great things. Didn't even mention the ending, which is one of the greatest endings that I've ever seen. Scared the crap out of me. Oh God, I gotta stop talking about Halloween 4. I could talk forever. Okay guys, number two. David Gordon Green's Halloween, Halloween 2018, just came out. Um, I just literally finished recording my spoiler review for this movie. I won't say any spoilers in this, but what I will say is um, I expected this movie to be a Halloween movie. I thought it would be somewhere in the middle of my ranking. did not expect it to jump up to number two. David Gordon Green took so many risks with this movie and Danny McBride. You know, this script, I think, is very good. But the biggest thing, I think, is what they did with Myers as a character. He was interesting again. Like... So freaking interesting from the beginning of the movie seeing him in those shackles uh, you know and the uh, journalist just trying to get a you know a noise out of him the guy was a complete question mark throughout the whole movie he was so freaking brutal too like you never knew what Myers was gonna do in this movie but the kills are just really graphic and insane I think they might even top like Rob Zombie's kills but more importantly you really cared about what was going on during these kills. All of his victims, in the way that they were killed, I felt I felt for the victims, especially the bathroom scene. That bathroom scene is like one of the most visceral slasher scenes I think I've ever seen. And I can't get this movie out of my head. I'm going to see it again today. Uh, what a movie. It topped my list for 2018, and I did not expect that as a Halloween fanatic. And then, of course, number one, John Carpenter's Halloween. I talked about Halloween so much. It really is like the the godfather of slasher movies. Yes, there were slasher movies before Halloween, but Halloween created a movement is what it did. What John Carpenter did with Halloween is like what every director strives to achieve with any slasher movie and fails at miserably. And I mean that in the best way. It's just a hard thing to do to create a perfect storm, you know, cre to create the perfect killer, the perfect atmosphere set on Halloween, uh, extremely likable characters, uh, Dean Cundy, uh, cinematography that is just amazing. Like it checks every box, and most slasher movies don't do that. You know, they're still trying to capture what Halloween captured. So, anyway, guys, that's it. That is my ranking, my brand new ranking for the Halloween franchise. Glad I got to do this. Anyway, like I said, post in the comments your ranking. Looking forward to seeing them. Really looking forward to seeing where the new movie sits uh, in your ranking. Anyway, guys, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day and on Fridays. We do free for all Fridays. Follow me at Drum Dums on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd, and I'll start us. If you like what I'm doing, hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and Drum Dum out.